Muslims, I'm not holding this against no. you, but the Muslims do tend to want to say to us, yes. as non-believers, that yes. in fact we have proven that this is... i tell you why, because even the Qur'an states that we will show them uh, from, from within themselves, the from within themselves and the, and the furthest horizons right. of the manifest truth of this religion. This is good, this makes sense. If a law was broken, the Jew had a choice to be tried under the Jewish law or the Islamic law. So because you're giving a, a painting a picture then of a very religiously tolerant. Allah says that we will preserve it from corruption. Yeah. Now I thought to myself, hold on a second, a something that was uh, written 14 centuries ago, I don't, I don't reckon really, to be honest, unless there's something far higher than what normal human being uh, would do, would actually preserve a scripture. But we actually know that it is preserved. Sorry? I think my understanding is yes. that when we found older, earlier scriptures, yes. that there's never been a contradiction in the Quran. That's never. one of its strongest points. That's right. If we spend so much time investigating what tyres to put on our car, yeah. because, you know, the rating, you know, fuel economy versus noise, you know, uh, versus grip on the, you know, what about the value of the afterlife if it exists? Terms like proof. We should now argue like that. Uh, I haven't paid asset yet, I know that. No, 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 don't go. I have to pray. My question, my question to you would be when you when you say proof or evidence of, of something being true, then what do you mean by that? Do you mean something that is claimed that cannot be explained through naturalistic explanations? So for example, if I say this book is from God. Yeah. And you say to me, well, where's the evidence that it's from God? Now, if I, and if I asked you, what do you mean by evidence? And you said, well, I want to see God directly bringing that book down with a giant hand and putting it down and say, this book is from God. Then I'll believe that. I think it's going to be observable, right? But what I'm, this is my, I'm just, I'm just saying, just, now there are some people who say, well, no, I wouldn't even accept that because I could be delusional. I could be hypnotizing my, you know, I could, I'm the hypnosis. I could be anything, whatever, right? So my point to you is that what we believe is why the people were convinced about uh, Islam, for example. I'm causing trouble again. We believe that all of the prophets had things to convince the people of their, their, their claims, that they're messengers of God, right? Yeah. Now, as I was explaining to the brother here, you know, if, if um, at the time of Moses, if you were there, and I say if, right? You saw the army of Pharaoh behind you and the sea in front of you. And this man who claimed that he was from God said, don't worry, I will save you, right? Yeah. We're just gonna ask God to split the ocean it's and good. the people like will it. cross over, right? Pretty convincing. Yeah. Now, if he did that right in front of your eyes, yeah. would you have any doubt that he probably was? No. Right, you wouldn't, right? Because now you've seen something yeah. that can't be explained through any naturalistic no. explanation. No. No. Well. Now, his children, are you still doubt that? <laughs> well, no, what I'm saying is, they now, can't know. Now, exactly Tony, when he says that to his children, yeah. oh, by the way, you know, 50 years ago, we were here, Pharaoh's army was there, and, you know, Moses put his staff down, peace be upon him, and the ocean opened up and we crossed over. Most of the kids might say, okay, my dad's an honest guy, I'll believe what he has to say. But some kids might say, oh, I don't know about this. Yeah. You get to the third generation, the 10th generation, the, the 15th generation. Now, the miracle is witnessed only by, you know, 15 generations ago. So you could have a, you could be skeptical about that. Yeah. Now, what's the miracle of Muhammad, peace be upon him? Now, we believe that he did do miracles at the time to convince the people. Yeah. So there are many narrations he where... He split the moon in half? Yes, yes, we do, yes. What's the evidence for that? Well, Since we're sticking to the subject. Yes. Well, we believe that at the time there were many people who witnessed this, and the Quran mentions it, that the Prophet split the, the moon. Now, you could argue, well, anybody can claim that. Can I say uh, something uh, quickly on yes. that? Sorry. I actually requested from an astronomer, astronomy organization about that, and I asked them, is there a fissure? There is. Moon? There is. And they said there was. Yes. So. Okay. But the, whether that fissure is the fissure, yes. or whether it's not the fissure, is not the issue here. The, the issue is, Tony, the, the issue is, 
what is the miracle of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that convinces me today that there's no naturalistic explanation other than it coming from God, peace be upon, uh, uh, from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, all of the miracles previously were for that time and for those people. But the Quran itself claims that it is a miracle. Yeah. For all time. For all time. Now, the question you would ask is, that's a claim. That could be true or it could be untrue. Yeah. So, as a rational, sensible, fair-minded human being, what you would do is you would say, what is it about this Quran that you claim to be a miracle, that something that cannot be explained through any naturalistic explanation. Why does the Quran claim this? Now, again, this is subjective, you could argue. My study, my investigation of the Quran, of the grammatical concepts of the Quran, the aspects of nature that the Quran speaks of, the challenge within the Quran, if, you, if this has come from anyone other than your Lord, produce a chapter like it, yeah. the Quran claims. A bold claim for a man in the desert in the 7th century herding goats comes up with a text and says, by the way, all of you poets, authors, writers, if this isn't from God, then come up with a chapter like it. Now the question arises, why did the Arabs fail? Because had they defeated him on any of these aspects, they would have falsified the Quran. They wouldn't have accepted it. Now when I look at the Quran today in modern terms, I look at things like Professor uh, Raymond Farin. So you're saying, just to be clear, you're yes. saying that from your point of view, it's exceptional. I believe That's that I no. Supernaturally. I believe that it's a miracle. Yeah. Now, am I the only one who claims that? If you look at Professor Raymond Farin, of the uh, you know, who uh, became an expert. By the way, he wasn't a Muslim. He became an expert on uh, Arabic poetry. And somebody said to him, you know, Raymond, why don't you look at the Quran? Because it's, it's, they regard it not as poetry, but it rhymes all the way through. Yeah, it's, it's, so, I'm sure it's a wonderful you, piece of work, just as Mozart No, 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 but it, it, goes beyond, it goes beyond that. You know, it goes beyond that. He studied the concepts of the Quran, which are the... But this man you're talking about, yes. he's a Kafir, he's not Muslim, Muslim he's a Kafir. Well, whether he's a Kafir or a, or a Muslim is irrelevant. Why trust the words of a Kafir? Because I, I also trust the word of another non-Muslim, uh, Professor um, Angela Neuwith of Germany, well, why? who is an expert. Because in Islam, it's not about, uh, in Islam, it's not about knowledge can only be attained from a Muslim. Uh, you know, the, if you look at the, much of the science, that came from the Greeks. If you go to the, I think the oldest translations of Aristotle, you have to go to the Arabic because they, they translated a lot of the works. But in fairness, so they you did. Are they so them because they do agree with your. You could argue. You, well, yeah. you could you could argue that. It's a fair comment. Yeah. You know, it could be confirmation bias. Can yeah? I see how much, how much, how much better it's talking no, no. to you? No, no, but you're but you're right because you know that could be confirmation bias it on my is, part. Yeah. Yes, it could be. Of course, it could be. It right. Is. No, 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 but no, no, no. But that statement that it is yeah. is not fair because you have to analyze whether it is confirmation bias or whether there's actually truth to it but it's a truth now now now, now professor raymond farin to go back to his his book he talks about the structural elements of the quran during the end of his study he accepts islam and becomes a muslim Interesting. when people ask him why did you accept it he said because the constructs of the quran the grammatical constructs are so complicated he talks about ring ring formation uh, parallelism chiasm he says that the, the constructs are so complex in my view they could not have been the work of a man in the seventh century or any group of men for that matter no 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 no, no, no you could disagree with his work no i wasn't going to contradict you i was going to say something very interesting yeah, because yeah. It seems to me that all the Muslims that I've spoken to, there is this need to prove. Yes. And if you speak to other faiths, you know, the Christians tend to sort of say, well, it's a personal thing, it's yes. my belief. Yes. But the Muslims, I'm not holding this against you, no. but the Muslims do tend to want to say to us, yes. as non-believers, that yes. in fact we have proven that this is true. i tell you why, because even the Quran states that we will show them ah. from, from within themselves, the itself. from within themselves and the, and the furthest horizon 
actions right. of the manifest truth of this religion. This is good. This makes sense. So knowledge, knowledge, challenging, uh, you know, uh, providing. That's why the Quran says, so for example, for example, in the Quran, Allah says to the disbelievers and to the believers, of course. But Allah says, did the universe give birth to itself? It's a very philosophical, deep question. But you didn't, when you, when you, have you always been a Muslim? From yes, I was born, a, born yeah, in a Muslim okay. family. So, because when people convert, obviously, yes. I wonder, you know, what's the percentage where they just accept the faith and, or where they say, well, I'm going to have it proven? Well, if you look at the Moray, Moray poll or the Gallup poll, they did a very interesting uh, analysis on converts in England and they found that between 2001 and 2011 there were some hundred thousand people who converted to Islam so now, now what they found what they found was the average age was around 27 the average educational level was postgraduate and these were generally successful and educated people and the average age average time sorry spent studying religion and comparative religion was around seven years and now, look, the question here is this. I'm not going to present that to you and say, look, there you go, that's the proof. What I'm going to say to you is, look, as reasonable human beings, what we should do is we should say, well, OK, look, that is somewhat interesting. It's interesting. Let, let me at least find out what, you know, talk to this brother who converted. Talk to this sister who converted. What, what was it that you found? Can I just, I would, yeah, can I just say yes. something, though? Yes. You know, I, I respect your, your belief system. Yes. I keep coming back to this yes. thing, really. Yes. Yes. That it's your, it's your truth. Yes. And, it ena and it enables you to make more sense of the yes. world. Yes. World, and I respect that. Yes. But, this, but do you, yes. as a Muslim, yes. Accept and respect yes. the views of the born again Christian over there, yes. the views of myself as the agnostic, yes. the views, the views of the, the, the Buddhist, yes. and what have you? Do you accept well, their beliefs as well? Well, well look, or do you actually th believe <laughs> yes. that you are the only true way to God? Okay. And if you do believe the yes. latter, then right. then that puts me off. Okay, because let me let me answer that directly. <coughs> there is. Let me answer. You know, let me answer that. Uh, let, let me answer that directly. Let me answer. Just totalitarianism. Okay. Let me. Let me answer that directly. Number one, in the Quran there's a verse, La uh, ikrafiddin. There is no compulsion in religion. The Quran states this. So that's not quite weak. No, 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 I, I'm getting to that. It also says, let them believe or let them disbelieve. So when you say compulsion, sorry, sorry. Yes. Do you, what do you mean by that? They can go, go as they wish. Well, no, no, no. Fair to ask Com compulsion, com compulsion means that you can, compulsion means that people are free, and the Quran says this, free to believe or disbelieve. Yeah. That's the first concept. Now the second concept that you're talking about, which is, let me please. Come and go. No, I'm, I'm let me come in and go now. I'll talk to you, but I'm, I'm just going to refer to Tony's further question, which was about respecting other people's belief. Now, when you say respecting, the Prophet said, do not swear at God, at Allah. So the companions were shocked that we're your companions, we follow this religion, we fo are you telling us not to swear at Allah? And he said, do not swear at their gods, so they swear at your gods. And when, for example, Umar Khattab conquered Jerusalem, he went into the synagogues and he went into the churches. This is the second caliph. And this was the principle of Prophet Muhammad And he said that your people will not be touched and your places of worship will not be touched and you are free to live as Christians, as Jews. In fact, if a law was broken, the Jew had a choice to be tried under the Jewish law or the Islamic law. So because you're giving a, a painting a picture then of a very religiously tolerant this is, Islam. This yeah. is Islam. Now I'm not saying all Muslims throughout history behave like that. And no one of course. Neither all right. Christians now, mean, neither all now do I respect somebody who says Jesus has taken a son? and has died on the cross as a consequence? Well, the Quran clearly says, Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten, and there is nothing comparable to him. Now, do I have the authority to respect a view that now contradicts what Allah has told me? I cannot respect that view. So for you, for the, the Quran is the blueprint, the truth. Uh, well, capital. Well, because 
Because it says so. No, 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 no. How do I arrive at that conclusion? Because it says it in the Quran. No, 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 no. I arrive at that conclusion because I'm convinced that the Quran's that this authenticity of the Quran as it's claimed right. from God right. for me. For you. It's subjective, of course. Fantastic. Of course. Now, for you, it might not be true. But Islamically, I have to respect your right to live how you want to live, be how you want to be. As long as I don't infringe upon your civil liberties. And I don't on yours. And you don't infringe upon mine. Absolutely. Absolutely fine. If I force you now and say, look, don't drink alcohol, don't do this. This is forbidden in Islam. And if you then say to me, why are you not eating a ham sandwich? Come on, I'm having one, you've got to have one as well. This is oppression. Exactly. And Islam is not about oppression. Though I, I accept that there have in history sure. been people of all religions and all nations Absolutely. who have been oppressive. Yeah, yeah. But you know, what I believe, what this, is, this is what I'm trying to explain to you, Tony, that it's very easy for us to make claims. You know, but what I would suggest to you... Hamza was actually what, proposing what, object, what, he what, what, proven the existence what, of... What, 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 I, what, I, would, what, I, what I would say to you is that... I found that ridiculous. Hear what I have to say. I hear what you have to say. And then let's take a step back. Think about what we discussed. And say, look, what is reasonable and what is rational to me? Yeah. Let's not jump and say, oh, well, you know... I can't understand how you guys pray on the floor. That's funny. That's crazy. I don't know why you would do that. That's crazy. You tell me this irrational that your prophet got in a creature called a That was like a cross between a donkey and a horse. I had a place which wasn't quite like a horse, and he managed to fly from Mecca to Jerusalem. And then he landed on a temple, and then from that temple he ascended into the seven heavens. Okay. First of all, the description that you've made actually is not in the Hadith or the Quran. I've never heard of that. Uh, but, no, no, no. Yeah, Burak is mentioned. Burak, no, no, you're right. Burak is mentioned. There are some there are some people, I believe, scholars who've uh, said it's something like a horse or whatever. Yeah, it's a but it's a supernatural. It's a supernatural yeah, it's thing, right? The, the reason why I wings. okay. The reason why I believe this yeah. is not because the story is so fantastical and it's so mythical and so I, you know I, it's so beautiful so I accept it no the reason why I accept it is because of the one who made the claim and the Quran that specifies this this event hold on a second and because I validate that first yeah. then I then I accept what it tells me okay. so now I haven't seen the angels All right. I haven't seen the angels can you say to me oh well well, prove to me that you've seen the, the messenger. No, no. So listen. No, so, no, no, no. So listen to what I'm trying to say. So, for example, whether it's Burak, whether it's the angels, yeah. whether it's even that the Prophet Muhammad existed or didn't exist, the Quran clearly tells me that it did. Now I have to say, hold on a second. Just because it's claimed it doesn't make it true. It could be just made up. It could be gibberish. So, hold on. so what I would do, what I would do, what I would do, is I, and I have 15 or 16 years old being born in this country these are some of the questions that I asked yeah. I said well look can't drink can't go out with girls can't do this can't no sex before marriage yeah, well, what, you know what is the thing that makes you believe that it happened you were just about okay to tell me. so when I've when I've looked at the Quran yeah. and the Quran says this is from God and it's a miracle I've said hold on a second that's a very bold claim yeah so I've investigated what these miracles supposedly are and through my investigation as I said to you one of the very interesting books uh, there's another book written by a professor in Leeds uh, Prof professor uh, Neil Robinson and uh, uh, Neil Robinson I believe he also became Muslim upon his thesis of investigating the Quran okay. now as a rational human being you would say look that's interesting yes. let me at least analyze what he saw that convinced him yeah, yeah. but surely once you accept Allah is the all-powerful yes why are the miracles an issue surely it doesn't matter about no no but how do you why come do you but how do you come to that acceptance of Allah's all knowledge or no knowledge of oh, yes, all powerful you still, haven't, you still haven't answered you were about to okay. Then mention okay so let, let me so let me explain why I was convinced about the Quran 
Because it was oh, because it was I was kidding. Okay, Sorry. You're not. It's no. not because of okay. No, 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 no. These were things. These were things. These were things that came much after, really, in my life. But there were there were many many things. For many reasons. Many reasons. So, right. so, 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 so number one. Number one. The Quran claims that it is a miracle of what it's pre and Allah says that we will preserve it from corruption. Okay. Now I thought to myself, hold on a second. A Something that was uh, written 14 centuries ago. I don't, I don't reckon, really, to be honest, unless there's something far higher than what normal human being uh, would do, would actually preserve a scripture. But we actually know that it is preserved. Sorry? I think my understanding is yes. that when we found older, earlier scriptures, yes. that there's never been a contradiction in the Quran. That's never. one of its strongest points. That's right. That's right. And, and in that's fact, coming from an atheist. And in, fact, and in fact, Angela Neweth, which is the, one of the most foremost experts on, Arab, on the Quran, she's not Muslim, by the way, she didn't convert. From my understanding, she's still, uh, I, I believe, an agnostic or atheist or whatever. If I'm wrong, uh, I apologize, but certainly not Muslim. I was just listening to a lecture on YouTube just the other day about, uh, you know, the professors when they speak, they're quite difficult to follow at times because it's quite a long lecture. But she said this connotation within Western academia of preservation through text is not the, the, the preservation that, that happened with the Quran. No. So it was an oral transmission and we have what's called Hufaz, people who've memorized the whole of the Quran. So the doctor who was just here, brother Imran, his daughter is Hufaz. Well, She's memorized the whole Quran. Well, son, his, his, he's your not son? Complete. He's not complete. His son is memorizing the whole Quran. I know Muslims who have, have now, been learning. My, yeah. uh, my father went to a, a, a dinner of a celebration of a girl who was six years old who memorized the whole of the Quran. Now, uh, well, 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 you say that, but you know, they found that academia, uh, these, these children often excel in academia afterwards, because when you train the low, you know, you've, you've done psychology. When the, well, 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 the thing is, you see, the, a child who doesn't want to do it, you can't ever do it. Anyway, my, my, point to you, my, my, my point to you is that when the Imam reads a portion of the Quran through memory, and in Ramadan, we finish the whole Quran in the night time during that time. It's all done by memory, no book. Yeah. If he makes a mistake, honestly, Tony, I'm, I'm being completely honest with you here, of a, of a vowel. If he says a ah, instead of u, uh, or i uh, instead of a, uh, uh, he will get corrected from behind. People will give him lukma. Sometimes children will give him lukma. Now you could collective obsession. Right, you could you could argue. No, 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 no. No, but Tony, Tony. Anyway, nice to meet you, brother. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You know, Tony. You see, you could argue that you could argue that this is just merely an obsessive trait. You. But but Tony. But 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 okay. But Tony. No, you're safe. Often, these people who memorize the Quran don't speak or understand. Understand Arabic. So a book of 600 so pages in a language you don't understand, okay, that you don't speak, that's not your mother tongue, and you memorize that from the start to the finish. Now you could argue, well, okay, there might be some scientific explanation for that. But I would suggest to you that an eight-year-old or a seven-year-old is only hearing sounds. Yeah, the I, don't, I don't think any eight-year-old or seven-year-old would voluntarily want to learn a 600-page well, book. What, what, know, what, there, what, there, would, there would be what, what all we, sorts of messages and signals given to that child, which I would consider... Well, to be we're, well we're told that you should never I'm force not. anybody. And you know, you know through psychology that if you try to force somebody, the chances are they won't do it. They won't be able to do it. Because it some, some, uh, right? I said, look, because he, he, uh, he enjoys listening to it in, 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 in his learning how to, how to learn it. I said, look, if you want to memorise it, uh, then it's your choice. I don't want to push you or anything like that. So, I'm, I'm with Tony. I, I do. Yeah. I, it does trouble me. No, no, no. no. OK. But you see, look, I, 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 I appreciate the, the, You see, the reason why... It's a great experience. See, look, look, the, the, reason, the reason why it troubles you is because, this, you see, this, con this connotation of... Uh, uh, of submission, of forcing, 
of you know uh, you know uh, co coercing brainwashing because you have this predisposition to believe these things is why you perhaps feel that it might be an, un an, an, an injustice now my own experience is my, my own experience is that that may well be the case in some cases where overzealous parents yeah. put pressure on their kids that's not Islamic this is not what Islam says I'm talking about the millions of people who've memorized this book because of the love of the book so, so now now you could argue well that's one minor point and it doesn't necessarily necessitate that this is from God but Allah talks about prophecies that will happen that come about by time you have concepts of the Quran challenging the Arab speaker of the time, the pagan, if this has come from anyone other than your Lord, produce a chapter like it. And many tried, many tried, and they failed. And when even the ones who did not accept Islam were questioned at the time, what do you say about this Quran? And they said, this is not the work of Muhammad. We know it's not the work of any man. They either said it was magic, they claimed it was magic, because they understood the grammar, they understood the language, they knew these words could not have come from any man. Now you can ask the question, you can ask the question, you know, why did they think that? Because when the Quran came down, the new elevated top pure principle of grammar and, and language became the Quran. It was a new way of constructing language. It had it, the way the way that the language was constructed, the rules, the grammatical rules, completely were thrown on their head. It was a completely new way of writing the language. They knew this was not the work of any man. Because when they tried to send the poets to say, you know, battle with Muhammad, so you know we can say, look, we've got better than you. They failed. Now that you could argue, well, okay, that's not just enough for me to be convinced, you know. Then Allah talks about many things that were unknown to human beings for many centuries. Have the disbelievers not known that the earth and the heavens were one? Then we parted them and we created every living thing from water. Will they then not believe? Now you could argue, well, okay, some of those concepts existed prior to Islam. Yes, you might be right. But the Quran talks about, for example, the moon and its reflected light and the sun, siraj, a burning lamp. Many times at that concept, at that time, people thought the moon had its own luminosity, its own way of, of, of lighting up. Now, why when the Quran touches on a, a thousand or so issues of nature, yeah, it doesn't make any mistakes and, the and tell the too, yeah? well we believe that one of the miracles that people wanted to see I, I was the part was the, was the parting of the moon now you could argue well okay what's the evidence for that well of course the evidence was, the, was for those who were standing there and watched it the evidence is not for us the evidence for us today is the miracle that is claimed which is the Quran I don't need to go to the evidence of whether the moon was split or was not split because even if there was a fissure running all the way down the moon, let's say there was a big crack, it doesn't mean Muhammad did it, does it? Peace be upon him. It doesn't mean he did it. You could argue, well, you know, it was a, 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 a very old volcanic eruption or a, an asteroid that hit it and it may have split slightly and it went back. It doesn't mean Muhammad, peace be upon him, did it. That miracle was for those who witnessed it then. It's not for us today. For us today is that the Quran claims to be a miracle my advice to you is look in life Tony in life if we want to investigate what TV to buy I love the way he just stands there while he does it or what car to buy he's used to it. he's a film star he's used or to what phone to buy well, what do we do Tony we check it out we check it out don't we why do we check it out because we don't want to be stuck with a potentially dud phone and it then is going to then cause us an inconvenience we're going to lose money there's a loss involved there you understand my point Tony so all I'm saying to you brother is this look I'm not saying to you that the same things that I was convinced about you will be convinced about as well they may not impress you I know somebody for example is doing her second doctorate she was Jewish 
she uh, met a, by chance she met a Palestinian uh, lady at, at university in medicine right and she tried to you know she wanted she wanted the, the Palestinian lady wanted to show her more about the Jewish society etc etc but my uh, this particular lady was very interested to find out but what, what is it that you guys believe she didn't even read the Quran she just read something uh, the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him she never read the Quran the seerah, the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him because of her knowledge of the Jewish Bible it was enough for her that evidence was enough for her to convince her this was not ordinary man he was the Prophet and she accepted Islam that's great. But no, 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 no. Muslims my, my, also my, become Christians. Of course you know? they do. Of course they do. No, no, of course they do. Or they become atheists. Yeah. Of course they do. But my point here to you is this. Look, I'm not saying for one second that because people accept Islam and they're educated, therefore Islam is true. What I'm saying to you is that what appeals to some people yeah. may be different to what appeals to somebody else. Yeah. For some, I, I've heard of a man who was at one of, one of these stalls. Yeah. He was on one of these stalls. Me too. Yeah. Me too. He turned the Quran. Yeah. And he read some verses of uh, Surah Ar-Rahman, the chapter Ar-Rahman. Yeah. And in that chapter, Allah says over and over again, How many of the favors of your Lord will you deny? How many of the favors of your Lord will you deny? In that chapter, it's mentioned over and over again. He closed it. He said, how do I become a Muslim? He accepted Islam. Yeah. My point to you is that it's not one thing that will convince yeah. well, one person. It's unlikely to ever convince right. me. But, you know, but one just, of the reasons why I come to these places yes. to talk to people like yes. you is because I do believe that we should try and understand of course, each other more. Of course. And that's really. the only hope for the of course. humanity. I totally agree we, with there's you. There's an awful thing going on yes. in the UK at the moment. Yes. Which you know about of course. the demonization of Muslims. Exactly. I hate it. Exactly. You know? and, and, and that's that, why I, 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 I want to understand and I reckon no, but you know where it comes from, right? It comes from fear. Yes. Yeah, it comes from fear. It comes well, look, from fear. it comes from fear. It comes and from. It, and from it, well, look, it comes from. It comes from many quarters. But, yeah, but, but some at the end of the day, you know, it comes. Look, but it but could at the end be. Of the day, there is no. There is no blueprint. You know, you're you're you've obviously been hugely, hugely inspired by by Islam, and you talk about all these other academics and stuff like that yes. who have also been hugely inspired, and that and that's and I've got no no argument with all of that. No, but what the I'm, only the only only time the stumbling block for me where it all goes wrong is when people particularly Hamza when he was going on that, that, that this is the only true way and that and that because and that because and I'm also you know I'm the fact that Hamza when you, actually believed he could prove it that was the, yeah the, but also when you say that because the Bible says that God wasn't begotten or something that's completely debunks the Christian yes. view upon because yes. they will come out we'll go over and talk to them yes. and they will come out with just as powerful passionate arguments that, which are the result of investigation which or validate their their world but, but, but you there see is no, though, there is no blueprint no but Tony you there see there is no blueprint I understand but, the but, 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 but Tony the Quran addresses that yeah. the Quran says if you speak the truth provide your evidence the Quran, the, 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 the the Quran are very so, much into the so, so the Quran says so for example Tony Tony the Quran says for example if you say that he's the son of God <laughs> and he's they begotten he is begotten yeah, the, no the Quran the Quran says look that that, that you must provo the, provide your, you must provide your evidence so if I, if I claim that the Quran is a miracle I have to provide you with some evidence it may be convincing it, it may not be it may not be but all I'm, but my, 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 my point to you really is this sir. no just as just as we Tony investigate about what camera to buy what phone to buy you know look if if, 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 if there is life if and I say if 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 there is life after death I say if Right? Yeah. Then clearly, what do you say? They, uh, no, because obviously, from an Islamic point of view, I believe there is. That's what, I, that's what I'm but saying. From, but from, from Tony's point of view, from Tony's point of view, he might be agnostic, so he he might say, oh, "Well, I." Atheist. Yeah. T Tony might say, yes, "Well, I I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Right? I don't know." So my argument is that look, 
if there, there either is or there isn't. It's one of the two variables. Uh, even who knows? It, the, the, we, I think what, what, where all, a lot of things get confused is we, we confuse the subjective with the objective. Yes. You know, we think we believe that our subjective view of the world yes. is the objective truth. Yes. And that's again where it all goes No, wrong, but Tony, really. you have to accept that there is an objective truth, whether we know it or we don't know it, yes. about life after death. Yes. Right. Is there a I well, well, we, well, maybe no, we're looking at it from no, no, either but, no, 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 but there has to be one right thing, that, doesn't it? Whatever correct. it might what be. You said was logical, yeah, it's correct. logical, right? Yeah. So either when we die, we are resurrected, and this claim that religion makes that there is an eternal life will happen, or it's all hocus pocus. It's all, uh, it's all, it's all, um, it's all just a bunch of atoms. And then, you know, these atoms will dissipate in, 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 in the universe and, you know, turn to carbon or turn to whatever. And th that's it. There's no Maybe afterlife. There's something else. Maybe there's another, well, an another perspective. An afterlife. Aside from well, those two well an afterlife of some, fo some, some form. Something that we just don't okay. understand. But, 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 know, but, but, like we can't, yeah, but I was know, just saying but, there is an afterlife or there isn't. That's, yeah, what, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I know, so, right. I'm, so, all I'm, all I'm saying I'm to you, saying Tony, if I'm saying, so, what, Tony, what I'm saying to you, if we spend so much time investigating what tires to put on our car yeah. because you know the rating you know fuel economy versus noise you know uh, versus grip on the you know what about the value of the afterlife if it exists I've seen this argument right and so please let us you know I'm not lecturing and I'm not you know prophesizing what I'm saying to you is as rational human beings let's at least give it some proportionate amount of time you know uh, a little bit more than perhaps tires yeah. or a little bit more than what phone to buy yeah. and really you know I try it, and read that. I've got a little you know? book called understanding the Quran but yeah. I must admit I find it very dense it is, it's very difficult it is it, is it is because really speak because me. Allah mentions in the Quran that Allah revealed it and Allah mentions the language in Arabic this very language was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perfected for the revelation to come down you know one of the other amazing miracles of the Quran and this is amazing really because if you think about it from the very start to the very end not only is it a profound message not only is they got grammatical constructs that are very complex right I'm studying, uh, right Arabic. not only does it have prophecy not only was it revealed piecemeal over 23 years without an editorial process and yet it rhymes as well alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-rahman ar-rahim maliki yawm ad-din iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in now you lose that in english because in english there's no rhyme there's no beauty the beauty of the recitation in arabic and the english translation you know if you look at french poetry i use that example sometimes or a song in french or a, a, a song in italian or whatever yeah. uh, opera opera and you sing opera in english it's terrible come on <laughs> it's chalk and cheese yeah. it's horrible. absolutely chalk and cheese and that's why that's why uh, truly if you want to really uh, absorb the, the the full miracle of the quran you to learn arabic. it has to be arabic yeah. but that's one of the look i'm i'm, I'm life's too short for me to learn arabic tony wait respect, tony respect to arabic tony I'm not gonna learn how many arabic. years did you spend how many years did you and how many books did you read exactly. to get to your position oh, of expertise remember again <laughs> loads of books yeah. loads why did you do that? Because I wanted to try and make sense of what's going on around me. Right. Excellent. And what was the other reasons to help people maybe? Well, maybe a couple more. Yeah. Right? Well, because I realized we're all ultimately all one. Was it, was, it, was, it, was it to have some stability of finances perhaps in your life? Yes. So it was a collection of thoughtful reasons for a thoughtful planned uh, all right uh, um, uh, you know a con conclusion yeah but I'm 58 now I'm not gonna learn Arabic. no no but Tony I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying that you have to necessarily but what I'm saying to you is that when people say you know I, I, I read it but it's a very difficult read and I explain to them just like opera Italian opera 
Yeah. If sung no it, pain, no gain. Right. If, if you sing it in English, <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. But you know, my wife understands opera. She understands Italian because she learned a Latin, right? Yeah. So now for her, it's very different. She might be next to me weeping and crying and enjoying the beauty of this opera, and I'll be sitting there, you know. Thinking, what the hell is going on here? So, so <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm, okay. I'm not. I, I just. I, I'd love to, but I'm not. I haven't got the brain power or whatever to learn Arabic. Well, then, so I have to sort of accept that. Yes. You know, that's not going to be my route into yeah, exactly. more of an empathy I, with I, I, Islam. I totally my agree. My route into more of an empathy with Islam is about by their by their fruit she shall know them. Right. You know, if if if, if, if Muslims. Yes. If I see evidence that Muslim people yes. are, are are endeavouring yes. to create a better world, yes. then I do see evidence yes, for that yes. and, know, it, and in fact that, that, that in itself yes because I believe you know you could call me hippy dippy yes but I believe that there's one element that, um, that underpins the all of the the, the, the life-affirming religions of the world and that is love yes and if the, and that yes. and that if if I see the evidence of that yes amongst amongst Muslims which I do see yes. you know then, then that, that gives me more of a, a yes. feeling of empathy yes. for them and a, and a more of an understanding yes you know, but in terms yes. of actually reading and study in the Quran I'm afraid it's I have no no but what, what you should to do Tony there's two or three things that Number one, to answer the latter statement, one should do whatever is one in one's ability. If you're not capable of learning Arabic because of you know there's simply not the time or perhaps the capacity to do it, then one can look at the things that perhaps are claimed about it, read it, read up as much as one can, and investigate it for themselves. You know, so look at Angela Newith, what she has to say. Look at the historian Karen Armstrong. Angela Newith. Angela Newith. Uh, I've probably pronounced her word Newith. N E W I T H, I think it is. But if you Google it, I might have spelt it wrong because I've, I've been known to do that a few times. Uh, if you look at Professor Raymond Farin, you look at Professor Neil Robinson, you look at their works, at least analyze their claims, you know? But also, you know, about love. The Prophet Muhammad said, You are not a true believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Now, the question was, is that a believer, a, a brother in faith, a fellow Muslim, or is that a brother in humanity? And the consensus of scholar is that this word that's used is brother in humanity. So in other words, I should wish for you what I wish for myself. So if I'm a neighbor and I don't wish to be disturbed, then I shouldn't disturb you. If, I, if, if, if you, I don't want people to throw trash in my back garden, I shouldn't do that to you. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Do unto you. That tallies also, that entire tallies with the whole sort of environmental green. Exactly. Movement, really. Because exactly. we realise that if we poison the air, exactly. we, we, get, we end up with asthma. Exactly. If we poison the rivers, we end up poisoning exactly. ourselves. This, is, this tallies with yes. what, what, the, what the planet actually yes. requires yes. an awareness of, of, I mean, of our interdependence. I totally agree. And Tony, Look, and how much Islam is? How much do we talk Islam about? Is going to contribute to that? Yes. To in terms yes. of us waking up to that, then that's wonderful. Now, Tony, how many? How much discussions do we have about water? Wasting yeah, water? I'll just consider. Huge discussions now that we're running out of fresh water. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, even if you're doing ablution, washing yourself before the prayer, and even if you're standing over a river, don't take more than you need. Right. In other words, the, the, the wasting of water, you know, it, the wasting of food. If it's brown, flush it down. If it's yellow, well, yeah, I don't think he said that, but but you see my point. Uh, you know, the, the point. Yours. Yeah, the point is that even if you're doing ablution for prayer and you're standing over a river, in other words, taking extra water, it doesn't make any difference because it's falling back into the river. But it's a mindset of wastefulness, yeah, yeah. of overconsumption. Well, the, you, know? you know, it's it's the spectre of water wars. Exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you know, what I'm trying to say to you is that it's a profound teaching by a man in a desert in the seventh century who was illiterate and only known for herding goats. Yeah, yeah. Do you see my point? I do. Anyway, yeah. I, I must. Tony, now. it was lovely speaking yeah, to you. Yeah, lovely meeting you. All right. What's your name? Uh, Abbas. Abbas. If I said 
anything to upset you, no, please forgive me. No, right? Uh, you know, uh, sometimes we get over passionate or whatever. To each other. But it was it was, it was lovely too. Even though we totally disagree. Well, I love the passion. Was it? <laughs> Tony. 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 It was a pleasure, Tony. Yeah. James. 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 Lovely pleasure to talk to you. Again, you yeah, very yeah. passionate. I love the way you speak.